Good morning. It's Tuesday, uh, June 16th. We're at the Paris Air Show with uh, Greg Gerhardt, president of Pratt & Whitney Commercial Engines. Uh, good morning. Uh, how, we uh, saw yesterday that Bombardier announced a 4% uh, improvement in their C-Series uh, using the GTF engine. Uh, obviously, part of that will come from the engine. Can you comment on your thoughts on that performance improvement uh, at C-Series and how that will translate into other programs? Yes, well, you know, we saw the C-Series fly yesterday. It was amazingly quiet. And, you know, we've been working very closely with um, Bombardier. Uh, on the engine, right? Right now, the engine's uh, meeting spec, if not exceeding it a, a little bit, so a little bit better than our uh, commitments. Uh, but overall, you know, the aircraft, as you saw from uh, Bombardier, is uh, is doing better in every regard. So we continue to work with Bombardier on uh, ways to further optimize uh, uh, the C series, both of the uh, CS100 and 300. Are you able to take the learning from the uh, the first application, the CS100, and put that to the uh, to the Neo, the uh, the Embraer? The the Irkut and the other programs you're on the MRJ program and uh, how will that reflect for customers as you continually improve over the years? Yeah, it's a great question and I, I think as you know we have uh, basically three engines. It's a 56 inch diameter fan that's on the MRJ and then the uh, E2175 and we have the 73 inch which is on the C-Series and then the E2190, 195 and then the 81 inch which is on the NEO and the Irkut programs and they're basically a family approach. And so we do get learnings and opportunities on one platform that then we integrate. And so we've had stuff from the NEO program that goes on the C-Series, and we've had uh, learnings and opportunities flow up. So we're very disciplined in terms of cross-functional learnings. And so we, as we do that, and we do more testing, so we're at about 19,000 hours uh, to date, uh, so the overall product just keeps continuing to get better. So we're very excited for, uh, where the current programs are. With uh, 13 EIS dates coming up over the next five years, uh, you guys are going to be uh, fairly busy. How are you? How are you managing that process with such a diverse customer base on uh, four, four continents around the world, with uh, such deadlines, one right after the other? Yeah. Well, we have a very disciplined process in terms of working with the airline customers for EIS. Uh, it starts about 18 months before, and we work with them for. Uh, documentation, paperwork, initial provisioning, field reps, locations, uh, but we also work with the airframers to make sure that we're in lockstep with on how uh, uh, Airbus or uh, Bombardier Embraer will be dealing with the customer to make sure it's seamless to the airline. Um, but you know, the other thing that I'm very excited about that we're doing is we currently have two flight test program programs going on, one obviously in uh, Montreal and one in Toulouse, uh, and we actually put field reps on site during the flight testing. So as we have issues, we have learnings, uh, we actually take those and we put them through the uh, uh, production process, right, as what would happen for a normal field rep. Uh, and we find some snags and we fix them. So we're actually already fine-tuning the process. And then what we're going to do with those uh, field reps on flight tests is we're going to actually move them out to the airlines. So Cutter, who's the launch for the A320neo and Swiss for the C-Series, they'll actually have field reps who have been on the flight line uh, and already know the product. And then they'll move to the next uh, EIS customer and so forth. So. It sounds like a great way to handle the problem. Are yes. there any concerns with the supply chain with the dramatic ramp up that you have over the uh, over the coming years, or is that? Uh, I know we've seen that as an issue with some of the OEMs. Yeah, yeah. it's. I wouldn't call it a concern. I would just call it that we're laser focused. Uh, we spent over a billion dollars just within Pratt and Whitney's uh, umbrella for uh, manufacturing, uh, but we're also working very closely with our uh, our supply base as well. And so we're very focused on automation. I, I, I don't know if you've been if you've been to our uh, Middletown facility in terms of the new assembly process. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're very focused there. We've been stress testing uh, both internally at Pratt and our supply base. So we demonstrate rate. So we'll go uh, to rate 5, 10, 15, 20 uh, before we need to get there. So we make sure that they can actually produce that rate uh, before we need it. But we're also putting engineers who actually certify the parts in our industrial uh, footprint both in-house at Pratt and at our suppliers. So if they design the part, they, they know what's critical and they know what's not critical and they actually work with the manufacturer to make sure producibility is there and where they can actually expand the tolerance and where they can't expand the tolerance. And that's been paying off very well. well that's great. Thank you very much, Greg. My pleasure.